In one of my previous videos, we saw an introduction to quantization. We saw different types of quantization, such as symmetric quantization, asymmetric quantization. Uh, in this video, let's do a little bit of hands-on to understand two fundamental types of quantization, namely the absolute max quantization and zero-point quantization. We will do both quantization and dequantization of a state-of-the-art model, such as a FLAN T5 and we'll find out how the quantization error affects the output. We'll try to test three models, namely the model without quantization, the absolute max quantized model, and the zero point quantized model. And we'll try to figure out how these models behave whenever we give some input prompt. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start with installation first. So the libraries that we need are uh, the transformer library, the accelerate library, numpy, and matplotlib. These days, the colab generally comes with the trans all, all these four libraries. But just to be sure, I'm just updating the code so that we have the latest version of transformers and accelerate. And we need matplotlib in order to visualize the distribution of the different weights when we're actually playing around with quantization. And numpy, of course, is to sort of implement the basic quantization algorithm. The model that we'll be using for our testing or quantization is the Flan T5 model from Google. So the T5 models were introduced to perform multiple tasks using just a single model. For example, if you take the first T5 model, it was able to translate English to German, but it was also able to summarize a given sentence or a paragraph. The Flan T5 is a better model compared to the T5, and it's just better at everything, basically, as they say it. For example, it was trained for an additional thousand tasks. And so I'm gonna play around with Flan T5 small in particular, because we are just demonstrating the quantization. We don't want to really play around with the big model and then end up with you know, memory issues and stuff. For that matter, we don't even need a notebook with GPU. So we'll just go with a basic uh, notebook which just doesn't even have a T4 GPU. And I'm doing everything in Google Colab. To begin with, let's just load the model. So I'm loading the Flan T5 model. And as a standard code, like I'm loading the tokenizer first, and then using the T5 for conditional generation, I'm loading the model. And finally, I'm just trying to visualize and find out what is the memory footprint of that model. So as we can see, the model is 307 MB in size, so which is relatively small compared to modern day LLMs. For example, the Google Gemma 2 was the initial model that I tried to play with, but I soon realized that it's really huge. Even the size of Gemma 2 was not fitting into the RAM and the uh, GPU memory when I was trying to quantize it. So I just skipped that and I moved on to Flan T5 small, which is a really small model compared to uh, Gemma 2B. So once we have loaded the model, I'm just trying to visualize the model architecture. For this, we just have to print the model. And as we can see, the model has different blocks inside each of the block. There are different layers. And inside each layer, the self-attention. And under self-attention, we got query, key, value, and output. If we, if you want to quantize, we'll be quantizing these weights. So to begin with, let's just visualize how these weights are, like the number, the numeric values of these weights. So what I'm doing is, like I said, under the model, we have the decoder, and under the decoder, we have several blocks. And under each block, we have different self-attention layers. And I'm going all the way and drilling down to just the query, and then trying to pull the weight data. And then I'm just trying to print it to see what the numeric values are for the data. So obviously the weights are loaded in a float format. So that's why we are seeing a lot of decimal values uh, without any integers. Uh, next, we move on to a naive implementation of quantization. So we are going to consider two quantization methods, which are absolute max quantization and zero point quantization. So absolute max quantization, as the name suggests, is all about dividing the, the input, which is x, by the absolute max of the input value. And then finally, uh, scaling it up to 127, 
and then whatever the values that we get we just round it off and finally arrive at the quantized input the exact reverse applies when you actually want to dequantize the quantized values for example if you just have the x quant you need to multiply it with the uh, absolute max and then divide it by 127 in order to dequantize it back to visualize the inputs that we actually quantized. For example, uh, let's look at these four values, which are minus 0 0.3, uh, 0, plus 1, 0.1, and 0.7. So in case of absolute max, the 0 always maps to the 0 at the output. So there's no change in that. And the other values are actually divided by the absolute max of this range. In this case, it will be 0.7. And finally, scale to be between plus 127 and uh, minus 127. And they map to these values, which are here. So when it comes to zero point quantization, we need to compute both the scale and also the zero point and hence the name zero point quantization. So when it comes to scale, we first compute the range, which is the difference between the max and the min value of the input. And then we just blow it up to uh, 255 and that acts as our scale. And the zero factor or the zero point actually is calculated using the scale and then we multiply it with the min value of x and then we subtract 128 from that and finally the negative of that becomes the zero point. This also indicates that the zero point entirely depends on the input uh, tensor or the input vector that we pass for quantization. So eventually the quantized values become the product of the input along with the scale factor and the zero point added to it and we round off all of that to get the quantized value and dequantization is of course just the reverse of quantization to emphasize what i mean so for the same values of minus 0 0.3 0 plus 0 0.1 and 0 0.7 in case of zero point quantization because we are actually computing the zero point the zero point becomes minus 52 rather than staying zero which was the case to when it was absolute max quantization. So this is the main difference between zero point quantization and uh, absolute max quantization. Now the advantage of zero point quantization is that it's very useful in case of neural networks when we use the ReLU function because the ReLU function outputs most of the values that are more than zero and then suppresses the values that are less than zero or the negative values. So this range uh, is vast and we don't have much values to the left of zero in the input. And with zero point quantization, the zero point is shifted all the way to the left. And so the en entire range of the output gets ut utilized. And so it's much more effective when we use the ReLU activation function in the neural network. Now that we have seen the theory, let's see how we can actually implement that. For the absolute quantization, um, like I mentioned, we just take the uh, max of the input tensor and then uh, we scale it up with 127 and then we get the scale. And finally, uh, we just multiply the scale with the input and then we get the quantized value. And for dequantization, we just have to divide the quantized value with the scale and we get the dequantized value. So this function, which has been implemented, returns both the quantized and the dequantized value. So whenever we want to compare the values before and after quantization, we have the dequantization value. And that is what we'll be doing uh, later on uh, when we progress through this notebook. Similarly, for the zero point quantization, we have the range computed, which is the difference between the max and the min value. And just to be safe, like we set the range to one whenever the input range is zero. And finally, uh, we blow it up to 255 and we arrive at the scale. And eventually, we'll have to calculate the zero point. And the zero point is the negative of the product of the uh, scale along with the, uh, the minimum value of the input. And finally, we round it off and then we get the quantized input, which is the product of the input along with the scale. And we sum the uh, zero point and we make sure that the value 
range between minus 128 and 127. So once we have that, we also uh, return the uh, dequantized values in this function, similar to how we did for the absolute max quantization. Now that we have implemented the zero point quantization and also absolute max quantization, let's just quickly uh, pass a tensor and test how the input and outputs are. So I've just uh, come up with this like synthetic data, which is like uh, minus 0 0.3, 0, 1, and 0 0.7. And I've just passed the tensor to both the functions. And we can see that the quantized values are now in int in both the cases. But the output after dequantization is slightly different from the input that we passed. For example, instead of getting 0.3, we're getting 0.2976. And in this case, we're getting 0.2976. 2980. So we can already see that just by sim simply quantizing and dequantizing a very basic tensor, we have lost some information. And this is what is the quantization error we should be dealing with whenever we do quantization of uh, any neural network. Let's also try to uh, test a function with passing the weights of the uh, neural network. Uh, we can see that the data type of the output is int 8 and not float after quantization. Uh, similarly, in case of uh, zero point quantization, we can also see that the output is int 8. So now that we have implemented the both the quantization methods, let's try to iterate through the weights and then quantize the entire model. So what I'm doing here is just making a copy of the, the original model, which is the uh, flan t phi small model. And I've created two copies, one for the absolute max and the other one for the zero point quantization and I'm iterating through the weights and for each of the parameter in the weights I'm calling the the quantization function so that we get the quantized version of the weights and finally I'm just updating the parameter data so that the weights are all quantized the same thing I'm doing for the zero point model and I'm updating the weights of the zero point model so that both of them are quantized versions now that we have quantized the weights using both the techniques, let's just visualize the dequantized weights so that we can compare the weights before and after quantization and understand what we have actually lost through quantization. So for this, I've just uh, done two plots. So in the first plot, I'm comparing the original weights with the absolute max quantization. And the other one is the original weights along with the uh, zero point uh, dequantization. So we can see that there are a lot of spikes which are being created uh, just by sort of quantizing and dequantizing backwards. All that it means is that the quantization process has introduced these unnecessary spikes, which in turn cascades into error when we actually want to use, uh, use the quantized model. Just to test the three models, I've taken these text from the uh, Wikipedia, which just is about LLMs, and I've just run the uh, model to translate it from English to French and let's find out how it does. So we can see that the actual model comes up with a different answer compared to the answer that's generated by the quantized models. I'm not sure which is correct because I'm not very good at French but we can see that the output generated by the quantized model is different from the model that is actually before quantization. Just to come up with the quantitative number, let's run some perplexity score on these three models and find out how they are. I've written a small function to calculate the perplexity and I've compared the perplexity of all three of them. We can see that in the absolute max quantization and zero point uh, quantization leads to a slightly higher perplexity compared to the uh, original model, which has a lower perplexity. But this is just one example. So if we probably run through a data set with a lot of text and then evaluate across the board, we can find out how good the actual models are. But this just gives an idea of what we can expect whenever we are quantizing a model. And we also seen two basic implementation of quantization but there are much more sophisticated quantization techniques, uh, which we will see in the upcoming videos. But for now, I just wanted to give a quick introduction to the quantization methods, which is the uh, absolute max quantization and zero point quantization. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that was useful to you. So I'll see you in my next video. Until then, take care.